In this video, you're going to learn how to convert any regular 2D based image to a 3D image that looks really awesome. When you use this tool that I'm about to share with you, it'll convert it to this image with this animation going on. Here's another example of a colorful bird in a forest and it's almost like you're there. This one's of a Mustang. Here's another example of this lady with her butterflies on her face and body. So it looks really realistic, almost like she's alive, but it's just converted from a 2D image. All this can be done for free and really quickly and easily and I'll show you how to do it in this tutorial. Hey all it's Aurelius, welcome back to the channel. All right, so as you saw in the intro, we were able to convert some 2D looking images into some pretty awesome looking 3D images and we can do all this for free, but before I continue, why would you want to do this? Well, it just gives that nice pop to the image rather than having to post something static and one that may not be moving. So if you want to maybe grab some eyeballs, you know, if you're in your advertisements or in promotions that you've got going on or on social media, then this is a great way to add that extra bit of flair. With that said, the very tool that can do all this for you is called Leopix Converter. This is owned by Leah Inc. And they do have this social network app more based on and targeted towards those who are interested in AI and 3D images. Check them out, but by no means this video is sponsored in any way. I thought this would be a great recommendation to you if you're looking to create those 3D images. All right, so let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is head to convert.leapix.com. I'll link it up in the description box below because the name can be quite tricky to spell. So go ahead and click that link. Again, it's not sponsored in any way. It's not an affiliate link, but head there, sign up for a free account. Again, this is free. There's no way to actually buy Leopix Converter. It's just their kind of initiative and their software tool to allow you know creators to create these 3D images. So once you've signed up, you will see this screen at the time of this recording, this is what it looks like. Bring your images to life. Leopix Converter lets you turn any of your favorite images into stunning depth animations. And that's pretty much uh, what this tool does. It allows you to bring your images to life. So right here on this screen is where you can upload or more so drag and drop your image. In this folder, I've got a few images that you saw. I've got this one of a lady with butterflies. I've got this anime character, I've got this colorful bird. Now the images that you want to convert, it entirely depends on what you want to create. And I basically generated some of these, such as this anime character using Mid Journey. And you could very well go to Unsplash, which is what I did to gather some of these photos. So if you just want to experiment and play around with it, feel free to go to that free stock photo site to download this kind of thing. But let's go ahead and use this example, right? With this lady here with the butterflies. <laughs> Simply drag and drop it to this window. Let it process. All right, it's completed. And right off the bat, you can see that it's already animated and turned that image into a 3D image. The great thing about Leopix Converter is that we can play around with some of these settings and the direction, the length of this animation, and we can fine tune it even more with advanced editing functions. But just to show you some of these options that we see on the left side, right? This is where you can fine tune those settings. The first being the animation length. If we click on that, we can specify how many seconds we want this animation to go for. But by default, I believe that Leopix automatically detects the best settings for the type of image that you have. So we've got animation styles and the motion, so it'll detect those things, including the edge dilation, which we'll also go through. But let me show you the difference between going from four seconds to six seconds. So you can see the difference in what this actually does. So now we've got six seconds and is going slower. If we switch it all the way down to one second, you can see how fast it's going. So somewhere in the middle is a sweet spot, at least with this image here. In the animation style settings, we can change the direction of the animation. So we can go horizontal, going side to side, we can go wide circle where it's going in this kind of circular motion in a wide format. We've got simple circle, we've got tall circle, vertical and perspective, which is what it was set to. But have a play around with those animation styles depending on the type of look you want. Next, we've got amount of motion. Do you want it to move a lot or less? So specify it right here. Let's go less so we can see the dramatic difference and there's not much motion. If you do want more motion, just set these according to your liking. Next is focus point. Where do you want the focus point to be set further away? 
uh, you can't really tell with this particular image because there is a white background. You can set the focal length to close, so it's gonna put more emphasis or focus towards closer subject as opposed to a further subject. Edge dilation, I'll show you an example now using this image here of the focal points and the edge dilation settings. Focus point, we can see now the focus is further away while the center, it's really subtle. You can't really tell the focal point, but in most cases you wanted to set it to center. All right, moving on, we've got the edge dilation. I am going to show you the difference between 0.5 to 1.5, so let's go ahead and set it to 1.5 and you might have noticed that but you can see the edge is a lot harder and it doesn't look good it's not flattering at all and you can tell that it has been kind of artificially animated you got to find that right setting but again Leah Pixwolf set it to the right settings after you upload an image so I think it was 0.5 and now you can see it's a little more subtle the edges aren't as hard it's more soft and you can go 1.0 but again you can see that hard edge there. So for this particular image, at least 0.5 works well. Let's go back to this image now and I'll show you the advanced editor, which you most likely won't play around with unless you do want some custom animations and going into a different axis and stuff. So we've got things like the amplitude X axis and the Y axis. To show you real quick, we can go from, let's say amplitude X axis to something like uh, zero. You can see now it's in a different motion while going back, it's going around. So it's got that perspective animation that we set it at. We've also got phase, so you can see the different kind of movements. Feel free to play around with that, but in most cases you <laughs> won't really need this. The easiest way to set your motions is by going animation style and choosing one of these presets. Apart from the settings that we've gone through, there is another setting called depth map where you can dive deep and play around with some of these settings as well, where it's going to uh, detect, you know, the different foreground, background, and you can specify the depth of it. So we can, let's say, set it to black. So further away, so it will be black in color. And this is rather, of course, more complex, but you'll see if I just color in using my mouse or more so like draw, you can see now if I do a preview, you'll see what it's going to do. It's gonna keep that section where I drew further away. So this may not be the best example with this uh, image, but let's use this one. I'll go to depth map and you can see what it detected as the foreground, background, and what's in white. What we're gonna do, let's say set it to further away and we'll leave the size of the brush to somewhere around small. So now let's say the top of her head, we're gonna just select there and now I'll do a quick preview and you can see <laughs> it looks weird and it, you wouldn't wanna do this unless you know what you wanna do with your image. But when you are on this depth map editor, you can preview it in different kind of modes. So this first being the actual image or this 3D image. Next is what it's actually detected as the foreground background. And the next one is a hybrid, right? So you've got your original image as well as the ones that the AI detected. If you wanna undo the previous adjustment, you can click on undo. And I have found that you can't undo it more than once, which is quite weird. You wanna undo, you know, several kind of times back and you can't really do that. But again, have a play around with these settings. Perhaps you are an advanced user and you wanna take your images to that next level using these complex depth maps and stuff like that. So that's that for the depth map. All right, once you're done editing your image, you can click on share and this will pop up and show you what available options are there to share your image. In this case, it'll be in a video format, which you'll see soon. And here we go. What we can do is of course, share the image to some of these social networks. And here's a link to copy and paste and share it wherever you want. You can also save this image to your device as a GIF, MP4, a LIF, SPS. I'm not sure what these other formats are, but in most cases, you'll save it as an MP4 file. So let's go ahead and click on MP4. Here's a preview and we'll click on save. All right, so here is the video. I'll just preview this on my computer and this is what it looks like. Pretty cool, it's saved that as is, no watermarks whatsoever. Again, it is a free tool. I wanna give you a use case scenario. So let's say you wanna create some sort of advertisement or a promo video, post it on social media or 
start some sort of Facebook ad or campaign, you can use something like Canva and we're gonna search for square video. So simply do a quick search in Canva for square video. And what we'll do is create a new blank square video. Next, I'll simply drag and drop the video to the canvas. This is what it looks like. I could have created like a 16, nine or landscape type of video, but because I'll be posting, let's say a square video, that's what I'll be doing and resize it in a way so that it makes sense for this particular size and we can click play. This is what it looks like. So there's some motion going on there. On the left side, I'll go to design and then I found this one that has pretty much something that's relevant to what this is about. I wanna get that font from it or that heading. So what I'll do next is just create a new uh, scene, click on this new race template and I wanna copy this text right here. So I'll do a quick copy on my keyboard using the shortcuts, paste it in. And let's say I wanna promote like a new race coming up for the, an event. We can adjust it or type out what we want, but let's center that and see how that looks like. And then removing this one that we just pasted in, pretty cool. And from here, I guess we could add some audio if we wanted to. We can also make it loop or using Canva, of course. And by the way, if you wanna learn how to use Canva to make these kinds of videos, then I'll link it up in the description box below. All right, and that's how you can convert your 2D images into 3D images that look pretty cool as you saw in this video. If you like this, by all means, give this video a quick like and comment whether you'll be using Leapix to turn your 2D images into 3D images. Thanks so much for watching. I'll leave up a couple of relevant videos for you to watch next right here. Take care for now.